Hello and welcome to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. I'm your host, Shane Lockwood, and this is episode 33 on the 9th of November 2014. Now before I start, I have to send a super special shout out to a company called Better Battery, and their website is www. B E double T E R B A double T dot com dot A U because without them this show show would not be recorded at all. Um, what had happened was when I was in Port McDonald my laptop battery had died. It ran out of power. But for some reason it just wouldn't recharge and I thought that the battery had died. But it turned out that the power supply had died because we had a a, like a massive thunderstorm and just the power surge just went through and knocked out the power supply. But I didn't know that the power supply had been dodgy for years and it was strange. I always thought it was the battery because you'd have like a battery meter that tells you how much power you had and how long it took to re, you know, recharge and all that sort of stuff. So it turned out to be the power supply all the time. So thank you very much, Better Battery. They are an Australian company, but if you're looking for like an, if you're in Australia and you are looking for a battery replacement for a netbook or a laptop, they are brilliant. They will find what you you know what you're looking for. They've just got an easy ordering process online. You click, send, and two days, you've got it in your hot little hand. And or if you can pay more postage and have it there the next day, incredible, um, absolutely incredible. Anyway, that's two minutes and twenty seconds of your time. I want to say thank you to everybody who tunes in each and every week, and. I want to say a special thank you to those who are listening for the very first time, especially those on iHeartRadio. There was a massive spike of listeners on iHeartRadio last week, and also those who are listening to the show through Stitcher. I do get the stats, and I am impressed. So thank you for tuning in. Now, on with today's show... It's three minutes in, I haven't even started yet. (laughs) But that's great. Um, What I wanted to do is send a a birthday birthday shout-out to Samantha. Um, She's the woman in Chester that I want to go and meet. I've been pen friends with her for at least 21 years now. And I finally got the money to go to Chester in the UK. But I'm going to wait. I do want to save up spending money, airport taxes, um, so on and so forth, because I just don't want any you know nasty surprises or hidden fees or anything like that. But what I'd like to hear from you guys is if you live in Chester in the UK or if you live in, in the north, Anywhere near that area, like Manchester or Leeds, I think Liverpool, then can you leave me a message and tell me what is the best time of year to visit Chester in the UK? And other things to avoid, I've heard that it can get a bit violent around the race days and things like that. And I do know that they've got the one of the best zoos in the world, Chester Zoo. So that's something that I'll be looking uh, forward to meeting, uh, going and visiting. So please let me know um, what you think of the place. Uh, look, don't hold back if there's if it's a rough area, if it's a if it's bad. Let me know. I do know it's a very good tourist industry uh, tourist trap. I don't want to say tourist trap, but You know what I mean, tourists go there all the time, it's got a lot of Roman history, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, a few people have mentioned the beard, 
and I do have a beard. Uh, not all the time, though. Um, I just haven't shaved in the last few weeks. It's getting a bit scruffy. I've got, like, hair about uh, coming off like a centimetre off my face. Oh, dear. Um, let's see, what have we got for you today? Doctor Who. Now, I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast don't actually watch Doctor Who and you're probably not up on what's going on but I think this is rather newsworthy they decided to gender flip one of the major villains in Doctor Who and this has caused a lot of um media attention and because the way they would the way they do these things with this particular character is they have scenes with this character and they don't let you know who this person is and you get to know the character and then they reveal that the character is like a villain and in this case this had been a female character and the traditionally she was always a male character or always played by a male yeah a male character and all the old doctor who fans are getting a real you know real sort of stuck up about it and i think it's a rather misogynistic attitude i think that it's quite good for the show to have surprises like that you know gender flip um a villain a hero you know Every now and again, it just keeps people on their toes. It keeps people um, happy. I think that uh, it's good that uh, young girls can actually play different characters and things like that. But uh, let me know what you think. Um, is it a good idea? I personally wasn't happy with it at first. But then when I saw... Her name's Michelle Gomez. When, when you see her performance and... The character she's playing is completely, completely crazy. And it's just amazing. Just an incredible performance. I think that she would rival one of the uh, the original actors that played the character in terms of performance quality and things like that. But um, once again, let me know what you think of her performance in the show. Uh, what have I got here? Oh, I um, talked about a Godzilla statue. Uh, it wasn't really a statue as much as a... Um, I don't want to say action figure, but that's pretty much what it was. But it's got a whole heap of articulation, and the point I was getting it for was I was going to do like a whole heap of um, stop-motion animation for my YouTube channel with uh, this little Godzilla thing. But, uh, yeah. Um, what else do we get? What else do we have here? Speaking of YouTube, my YouTube channel is not doing all that well. Or, rather, it's been... <laughs> it's doing the same that it always does. Um, it's consistently poor in the viewing figures and things. But I have let it go for the last month or so. I've been travelling... I do have a video in the works. Um, I've just got to figure out how to end the video and make it funny. And I want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in to the um, Ancient Alien Assholes episode 8, I think it was, which was the one that I contributed to. But thank you for everybody that found that, that funny. Um, I tried to do as best as I could with the footage that I had. And each sort of segment had me sort of laughing out loud each time. So that's the way I work. Um, a lot of the time I know that what I do isn't funny. Uh, but then again, sometimes the the, the funniest stuff is un, unintentional. And you think, oh yeah, I'll just keep that in. So it's a matter of just recording and recording and recording until you get something that's right. Same with this podcast i normally take several attempts to 
even get started. And I could record for like 20 minutes and then go, no, I'm not happy with this, so I've got to start again and from scratch. But, and that's why the podcast is often late. It's just me being a perfectionist, really. And, oh, screen server. Um, yes, a um, few people have, have mentioned that um, I'm a little bit more upbeat than I have been in the past, which is great. Thank you for that. And a few people have said that I've been was sort of stressed out in the last few episodes. I think when you spend any time with anybody, especially when you're out of your element, like I was with my father and his wife out at Paul McDonald, and I was there for five days. And what happens is you start to take on their personality. Yes, it's true. Like you will start to take on the personality of the people that you live with. It's a strange phenomenon, but I think what happens is humans do this because we're constantly adapting. So we will adapt to the people around us by changing our behavior, changing our personalities to match the environment that we're in, the social groupings that we're in. And um, I become a little bit more and more like my father. And oh, when I got back to Adelaide, a lot of people were saying, oh, look, you're sort of, you seem rather, you know, you're not yourself. And it's like, yeah, I'm aware that I'm not myself and I'm, I'm aware that, that my personality was all over the place and I'd be you know it got me into a lot of trouble well not a lot of trouble um not that I couldn't handle but but yeah so the beard is back for the time being and uh I'd like to let you um please let me know what you think of facial hair on men some women tend to like it some women don't like it but i'm talking about me personally does it do you think it suits me um personally i'm the way i've got my beard now is very scruffy and i prefer to be clean shaven to be honest but some people like the hair so yeah let's see so yeah i will have to do some more with my YouTube channel. Uh, what else is there? The pageant. Uh, the uh, pageant. Uh, I don't know the name of it now. I do have Google open. And uh, if you're listening to the show, you should have Google open as well. You should be ready to Google anything that I talk about. And I'd forgotten the name of the pageant. So I'm going to. I think it's just called the Adelaide Pageant, or it might be named after a financial institution that backs it. Probably the uh, People's Choice, the People's Choice Credit Union, um, Adelaide Pageant. That's uh, P A G. E A N T Adelaide Pageant and what the pageant is is basically yeah it's the Credit Union Christmas Pageant uh, 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 uh. what it is it's like um, you've had pageants before um, it's just basically like a street parade where people you know dress up in different costumes and. Uh, but this is a little bit more sort of Christmassy themed, and it ends with like there are clowns that run in and out, they're up and down the street, and they they close off roads, um, and then they, they were I think it's uh, I think the equivalent it would be like the Macy's Day Parade in New York City. Only we don't have like inflatable like balloons. We just have uh, floats, which are basically like cars or like trucks with things on the back of them. You've got musicians, uh, people banging drums, 
Uh, yeah, here we go. 63 floats, 16 bands, 11 dancing groups, clowns, and walking sets. Like marching bands, I guess that is. Uh, 1,700 people participating. 200 extra volunteers. And the cleanup is uh, pretty bad afterwards. Uh, mm -mm -mm. It's a 3.3 kilometer route or route but uh, at the end of the pageant the highlight of the pageant is of course Santa Claus and uh, <laughs> and also or locally known as Father Christmas I think that uh, with the Americanization of Christmas and everything else the, the name Father Christmas doesn't get used as much as Santa Claus does. And for those of you who are who what did watch Doctor Who today, you would have seen a little cameo from somebody coming in up in the Christmas special. And I am looking forward to that, despite all the. Uh, controversy over Doctor Who and the gender flipping of a certain villain and I don't really want to spoil that if I mean that's spoiled enough unless you're actually watching the show and I know that like I said I know there are people that listen to this that don't watch Doctor Who um, but the the gender flipping makes sense if you understand that the race of people that the Doctor comes from, and the villain in question here, they have the ability to regenerate. And the regeneration process basically gives the the, the time, lord, time Lord in question the ability to renew every single cell of their body and that because it's a random process it can involve uh, a new gender and of course this has upset the purists because they want to keep it that way you know oh for you know the show's 50 year history you know there's never been a gender flipped you know, character and a, a time lord's always been male you know, like a male time lord has always been male, and a female time lord has always been a female, etc., etc. But of course, in I think the episode these the, the, called the the Doctor's Wife, and the, yeah, it's called the Doctor's Wife. There's an episode where oh, Doctor's the Doctor's Wife is an episode where the Doctor mentions that one of his friends at the Time Lord Academy had gender flipped a couple of times. So it's not uncommon um, within their culture to to do that. Um, maybe one day they'll explain more about it. I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of mystery and going on with the Christmas special. But I think it will have the... A villain called the Crinoids, which like which are a plant-based uh, monster from an episode called Seeds of Death, or is it Seeds of Doom? I know it's a Tom Baker storyline. Tom, Tom Baker was the fourth actor to play Doctor Who back in the seventies and in the early eighties. Um, what? else is there oh for today's meme busters i think a general rule for me busting memes is when you just i think in general just think in terms that everything on the internet is false until it's proven and i've fallen for a few one i fell for was a new version of the hoverboard scam um, initially, it was well, when they first did the scam. It was just CGI, and uh, it was they brought in all these sort of musicians to say, "Oh, you know, the hoverboard's the best, etc." Now, 
the um, basically the, the new scam is they were using magnets and stuff like that and a YouTuber by the name of Thunderfoot debunked the whole thing so just be aware of that as and I think as a general rule what I do is as a meme comes up in the Facebook what's his name news feed I look at the source so if it's the onion or the shovel then you know that it's satirical and you read the headline you know it doesn't make sense is it real uh, is it possible those sorts of things and a lot of people are posting or sharing stuff from a a group called raw for beauty and i think there's a few other other ones uh mother nature uh, i can't remember the names of them but they if they've got na like natural news or those sorts of things that you can pretty much dismiss them as being bunk and uh, because they're not scientifically accurate and they do have an agenda you have to be very very careful with some of these memes because they do have an agenda um and if you don't question them then you end up believing anything really i do know friends that uh they're funny that it's like they're skeptical enough to be atheists but they don't apply that skepticism to other areas of their life so they start believing things like that the that the uh was it aspartame it's easy to think that that's poison but why is it in certain foods they can't do that they wouldn't do that uh the lawsuit that would result in poisoning people would be uh and it would be a group lawsuit and it would put companies like pepsi and whatnot out of business so the other the the, the rule of thumb is the do it's the dosage that makes the poison aspartame you would need to eat or consume like a can of i think like uh, something like i can't i think there's like 60 liters of pepsi a day for 60 years or something like that before something like aspartame would have any harmful effect on you at all and you'd be dead for you know drinking that much liquid anyway but uh yeah it's just crazy the some of the stuff come that people come up with genetically modified organisms are not harmful in any way shape or form they're government regulated which is more than what you can say for organic food you don't know how much pesticides in that it's not supposed to have any pesticides at all but there are no controls and i do know people that work in uh, that have worked in or the organic food industry because they were hippies at the time only to find out that um yeah it's um, not what they advertise it to be so you just be careful do scrutinize things do uh check everything with a website called snopes.com you'll find that uh, that will debunk a lot of stuff and i think just in general just think that anything you read on the internet is fake or inaccurate in some way shape or form i found out that um 25 percent of articles in scientific peer-reviewed uh journals are accurate i think it's only 25 percent of yeah 25 percent of of articles in scientific magazines um that are supposed to be peer-reviewed and stuff like that are accurate because nobody wants to publish articles that aren't positive so there's automatically a bias you know they want to sell a magazine so therefore the it's easier for pe people to buy a magazine if there's something good in it so for example 
Nobody wants to hear about the, the bad effects, of, bad side effects of eating chocolate, for example. But if you publish an article that says, oh, look, there are good benefits of uh, eating like a small amount of chocolate every day, then that becomes more popular. People are more likely to buy that magazine and say, oh, look, here's proof. The same goes for drinking beer or drinking wine. They'll say, oh, there's antioxidants in wine. Yes, that's true. But you would have to drink a lot of it for there to be any real value. And, But to, for there to be any real value, you would have to drink it in moderation. Because it's alcohol, <laughs> it does far more damage than it does good. Um, the other thing, what was the other thing? Um, fluoride in the water supply. Once again, it's a matter of it's the dosage that makes the poison. It's, you know, like parts per billion of litres and stuff like that. It's not even worth mentioning, you know, but a lot of these uh, websites, memes and things cash in on spreading fear and making you angry and, and stuff like that. I busted a... Oh, that was weird. Yeah, I busted a, a YouTuber named Raw for uh, Raw Christina, I think it was, and she held, did you know the old McDonald's burger experiment and stuff. And she's holding the burger on a plate while wearing gloves and pulling faces, going, Ugh! you know, that sort of stuff. The reason that the McDonald's hamburgers don't quote unquote rot and go mouldy and stuff like that is because there's no moisture in them. So they just dry out. So they so if you see something that says McDonald's hamburgers this is you know, has been two years and it hasn't rot hasn't rotted out, hasn't gone mouldy or whatever like that. It's because there's no um, there's nothing for the mould to grow on. If you were to squirt that with water There'd be mould there, don't worry about that. And there's no way you could eat eat a hamburger that was a few days old anyway. It, just, it would make you sick. And I know there are a few people that listen to this that don't eat at McDonald's, and I'm not endorsing McDonald's. I'm just saying that you should be questioning everything that you read on the internet. I spend more time on Google and Snopes than I do on Facebook these days because it's just a matter of trying to debunk and question every little aspect <coughs> um i will be doing a an unboxing of that godzilla statuette action figure thing when i get it oh for kid for if you're looking for a christmas present for your kids a rather expensive but uh worthwhile um toy you could say if they've got an Xbox or a PlayStation, you don't need the latest Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 for this. There's something called Disney Infinity. You want to get Disney Infinity 2.0. Now, it's a rather expensive exercise because the starter kit is the Avengers pack. And you get three figures. And... I think it's a hundred dollars. I got it for eighty-eight uh, because I went through Big W rather than EB Games. But I went to EB Games, found out all the information, and then went to Big W to buy it. The you get the Avengers playset, and then you have to buy if you want to play with different characters. You have to buy the characters separate. That's why it becomes a very uh, expensive idea. But there are different playsets. One's a Spider-Man one, and what the other one is the Guardians of the Galaxy one. And I just wanted to play with Groot, who is a tree-looking character from the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, which I thoroughly recommend. The whole family can see it. It's, it's a uh, great movie. Um, I can't wait for that to come out on DVD or Blu-ray very shortly. But anyway... Um, I think it's like $40 f 
for the additional play sets and then the certain characters will only work in certain play sets but all of the characters will work in the toy box I think that's how it works but you have to buy each of the, the little characters separately and at uh, $17 each yeah just be aware of that the initial game is like anywhere from 88 to to $100 then you've got to pay uh, like $40 for the additional an additional play set and then $17 for each little figurine that goes with only certain uh, specific play sets it's important to only get uh, the Disney Infinity 2.0 because the older Disney characters won't work with the Marvel ones unless you have the Marvel Disney uh, 2.0 yeah, Disney Infinity 2.0 <clears throat> because it's not backwards compatible, um, unfortunately. I don't think they uh, knew what they were doing when they did it. But, yeah, go for the future version if you're going to go down that route. It is an expensive thing, and just be aware that you have to eventually have to buy pretty much all of the Marvel characters, you know, depending on you know, what your kid wants and stuff like that for Christmas. I thought I'd give you a heads up. I was impressed by it. But you will end up with hours and hours and hours of gameplay. Uh, it's repetitive gameplay, but it's uh, game, you know, decent gameplay nonetheless. And it's Disney, so it's a lot of the stuff is harmless and kid safe, pretty much. So that's it for me. Another half an hour gone. But I'm running over time. But what I'm going to do is say thank you for tuning in. And if you want to let me know. Oh, the, the, the important code word is the word important. I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T. Important. Because it's time for me to go. But... If you enjoyed the show, please click like. I know there's a few of you that haven't done it. Um, and I was rather disappointed, I should say. Um, but I can't force people to like the show. I, But the likes keep me going. If you want to send a tweet, you can do so at S-H-A-I-D-O on Twitter. Send me an email at shane underscore lockwood dot uh, at hotmail.com the facebook group you just got to click like and you will get all the updates to the podcast and all the information about me talking about the behind the scenes stuff that's going on with the podcast all these links and things should be in the description box on youtube or within the show notes, within the whatever app you are using to listen to the show. If you listen to the show through Blueberry, please let me know. I would like to know which, where you found the show, what you enjoyed, uh, what you don't like. I do know that I have to tighten up the show again, but I'm trying different methods to record the show. I'm recording this in my room on my netbook um, which was what I've done previously before but I haven't tried it here I'm trying to be as way far away from my computer as possible so I don't have to hear the noise of the fans uh, I do listen to each show and I do try and pick up things that I missed while I was recording, etc., and editing and stuff like that. But anyway, I, this is 35. I'll make this 35 minutes. May the rest of today and the rest of the week be easy like a Sunday morning. See you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>